producer, arranger, and choreographer of Rumors was guitarist Lindsey Buckingham, who was in Toronto recently. We asked him what he thought was the key to Rumors' success. Well, I think the basic motif was uh, pain. <laughs> I mean, you know, there, was, there was a lot going on behind the scenes there, which I'm sure everyone is somewhat aware of. Uh, Christine and John were breaking up during the first part of Rumors. Stevie and I were breaking up. <clears throat> I don't think we were consciously trying for a theme or feel on the album, but um, I think we were having enough trouble during the Rumors album just being able to separate our priorities there, which is something we had to do, uh, absolutely, in order to continue working with the same people that we'd just broken up with, which is not an easy thing. People usually break up with a partner and they don't have to see them again. And we, <laughs> we had to make this decision, obviously, that the that music was more important than whatever was going on in our personal lives and just try to <clears throat> just try to get through that and i think one of the reasons rumors sold the copies it did uh, 16 million albums was that uh that pain and that determination more or less went right on the vinyl after rumors it took fleetwood mac two years to release their next album tusk over which lindsey buckingham had almost free reign although tusk sold four million copies it didn't come anywhere near the success of rumors I think there are a lot of reasons why Rumors sold 16 million albums, and one of the things was that in 1976 or 77, th those were just boom years for the business, uh, the industry. Uh, every, uh, most of the artists that I knew at that time were selling double platinum or platinum albums. Uh, there were uh, sh shows that were, you know, these crazy outdoor concerts where people, promoters were making a killing and bands were making a killing. I mean, there's... 60,000 in Toronto. Yes, I know. There, there, those were just incredible years for the business. By the time Tusk came out in 79 or 80, um, the business had fallen off, for one thing. Money was much tighter. Radio had gotten tighter. That was one of the things that happened on Tusk, was that we confused the radio stations. They didn't know exactly what to play. Um... Sure, you can't, you can't deny that there was a certain lack of commerciality to the album that affected sales, but also there are other aspects, too. It was a, a 1695 double album. It was very expensive. Um, it, uh, the, the, had we put out another Rumors in 79, it certainly would not have sold 16 million albums again because the times were different. As with most big bands, there are always rumors that they're breaking up. Those rumors were especially directed at Fleetwood Mac when three of the members released solo albums. Both Lindsey Buckingham and Mick Fleetwood have done solo works, but neither have matched the popularity of Stevie Nicks' Belladonna. I asked Lindsey what he thought of Stevie's album and the success of her hit duet with Tom Petty. That song is not representative of the album, from what I have heard of the album. That's really, a, it's Tom Petty more than it's Stevie because I mean, it's got his band on it and he wrote it and sing on it. So, you know, I... And the, the new single has Don Henley singing on it. So there's a, I, to me it's a little ironic, I, the, the whole the idea of Stevie stepping out of the shadow of Fleetwood Mac or whatever and into the shadow of two other <laughs> famous lead singers. So I don't, I don't, I'm not sure how that works out. But, uh, no, I, dra Stop Dragging My Heart Around is, uh, was a, a great tune. There's no doubt about that. It was a, a massive hit. How do you feel about her success with, uh, with the song and with the album? Well, I think it, she deserves it. I think it's, uh, it's something that she's wanted. Um, I think... Uh, because really her involvement in the band, other than being a writer and really visually what she has to offer on stage and, and, and her voice, she, her involvement with the band is, is fairly limited because she doesn't produce, she doesn't uh, really, she's not an effective member in the studio. Um, so I, th I think it was good for her to get out and, you know, experience some different levels, working with someone else, I think is something she's needed to do for a long time. I may be way off base with this, forgive me if I am, but uh, in talking about Stevie Nicks, you seem to have almost a, a kind of lover's bitterness that, uh, that always hangs in after you've broken up in a relationship. With the well, other I don't think there's too much bitterness uh, uh, at this point. Um, when you are in a relationship with someone and you break it off, usually you don't see the person. And you don't have to deal with that. Well, Stevie and I have had to see each other constantly ever since. 
Um, so in that situation, it's going to take the dust a lot longer to settle. I mean, there was a long period of time where there was bitterness between us, you know, quite frankly. I mean, Stevie and I are getting along better in the studio now than we've gotten along probably since we broke up. It's very easy to get mad at each other when you've come out of a relationship. Yeah, that's, uh, it's a little, it gets a little weird around the edges. Uh, but uh, I have a great affection and respect for Stevie, you know, and... Uh, to be totally candid, are you still in love with her on maybe a different level? Oh, I think you always love something about the person, and I know that I've had people say that to me, that, uh, boy, I think Stevie's still in love with you, you know, just the way she looks at you or something when you're not looking. And I say, well, that's great. I, I don't think I'd want to <laughs> jump back into the relationship at this point. Sure, I mean, there, if there was a chemistry that brought you together in the first place, you can't deny the fact that there, that chemistry is probably still there. But, and, and I will always love things that we had and things about her, sure. Yeah. But not, not in that way of still being in love with her, like sitting home thinking about her pining or whatever. No, not like that.